Hey, so I recently watched the Lean Into Art episode 161, which is on coloring. And great podcast. Always really like it. Um, always interesting to, to hear listen to. But there's a couple of things that I wanted to, to mention really quickly because uh, they weren't discussed. And uh, the first one is a resource, which I think should be talked about anytime you're talking about doing anything with, with color, uh, which is this book. Uh, Color and Light, uh, A Guide for the Realist Painter by James Gurney. Um, I don't make any claims to be a fantastic artist. Uh, I'm not a professional artist. Uh, I'm not a professional comic artist or anything along those lines. Uh, I just do it for fun. But you basically can't find a bad review on this book. And it talks about everything from, you know... um, different kind of lighting and different types of circumstances. Uh, it talks about, you know, basic things like core shadows and cast shadows. Uh, it talks about things like uh, occlusion. It talks about things like, um, let me see, um, ambient occlusion. It talks about things like painting on a limited palette, uh, color balances, hue shifting, um, just, so much stuff. Color triads. It's good in a lot of color theory things. Um, and really, just the guy is... I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys have all heard of, of James Kern. He did Dinotopia. Um, he now, I think, primarily works for National Geographic and uh, teaches, but he will do just these phenomenal renderings. Um, and his use of color is just amazing. So... Yeah, if you like art stuff and you don't own this book, you should buy this book or at least get it from your local public library. They usually have a copy. The other thing I wanted to talk about is layer masks uh, and using layer masks. And um, there's a bunch of different ways to go do it. You can do it in Photoshop. You can do it in a bunch of other programs. I'm going to go over this super quickly in Clip Paint Studio. And again, making zero claims as regarding you know being decent at color so i'm just going to go ahead and create a new layer here and i'm going to go ahead and put in some some basic um you know flat colors so uh, we've got a couple basic shapes here and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and do the select and fill thing uh, to get basic shapes for for most of these guys and i thought that was in there but maybe it's All right, well, even if it's not, I'll just do it a, a simplified way. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this. Oops, it's the wrong tool. Do the lasso tool. All right, so I'm going to go fill that in. And we'll move this layer below the lines. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'll pick a different color. Um, say this sort of aqua kind of color. We'll do this for the sphere. All right, fill that in. And I'm not trying to be particularly clean about this. I just want to kind of give a, a super quick example. And we'll use sort of a more desaturated kind of old, old bony color for this skull thingy. All right. That is equivalent to, you know, flats or the, the sort of local uh, color. The other thing that, that this is for me is going to be mid-tone, right? So this is, this is not going to be the particularly bright color. This is uh, your sort of medium. And then what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go create two adjustment layers. And the, the goal of this is not to have this be the entire way that you do coloring, uh, but this is going to give you the majority of the foundation, and it's going to go ahead and speed things up. Uh, pretty dramatically, I think, for, for a lot of people. So, what do you want to go do? Let's look at these guys sort of painted in there. All right, you want to go create a new layer, uh, and the layer type is going to be an adjustment layer. So, if you make sure that this is, I eh, should thought it should show over there. But, all right. Then, what you go do is you go to the layers menu uh, and you say new correction layer. Uh, in Photoshop, I think this is going to be an adjustment layer, but the idea is basically the same. So, we can go ahead and use this. 
Um, we can go ahead and create uh, a huge saturation layer. Um, you could probably also do it with a color balance layer. We could try this with color balance. So um, I'm going to go ahead and sort of adjust this more towards the blue. Or actually, you know what? Let me, let me go ahead. And, I'll start with the shadows first. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this more towards the warm. So I'm going to go red. Uh, I'm going to go yellow. And I'm going to go more magenta. So you can see this sort of previewing in, in the background. Um, you can do the same thing for the other one, so cyan. And then, or, oops, red, magenta, yellow. Uh, and then highlight, we can go ahead and do this as well. But highlight's not really going to apply to us very much. So you then go ahead and do, again, red, magenta, and then yellow. We're trying to make this warmer, um, basically. Um, so that's going to go adjust this. That's your, that's your color balance. Right, so you can go ahead and see that that's now a, a, a brighter color. You could then go ahead and make another layer that's that's darker. So that, that's one way to go to this. Right, I'm going to go do it a different way, but that's, that's one option that you have. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new correction layer that's going to be uh, hue, saturation, and luminosity. So the hue, and I don't like the way they do this in, um, in Clip Paint because it doesn't tell you exactly where you are in the color spectrum which I think would be much nicer. But I'm going to go ahead and say that looks warmer to me. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and make this more saturated because shadows are typically more saturated. And I'm going to take the brightness down significantly. So, um, so that's basically, this is going to give me an ambient kind of shadow. Um, it's going to be just something that I can go ahead and use. And then if you notice, this correction layer has two sections. We get the left-hand side which is basically your normal layer. And then we have this part over here, which is a mask. So I'm going to go into this mask. I'm going to go select all, and I'm going to hit delete. And that deletes the entire selection layer. Right? And then what I can do is I can use two colors here. Right? I can use, um, oh, basically, it's, it's, it's a positive or a negative. It's a one or a zero. It's, it's there's value or there's no value. And if there's value, that's going to go paint in the, the mask. Right? So that that's going to go ahead and show us the, um, the, the adjustment layer. If I go paint in uh, clear, which is an option that you can go do, or I erase something, that's going to go take away the mask. So basically, at this point, everything is clear. There's nothing there. So if I want to go add some shadows to this, I can go take a brush. And it doesn't matter what kind of brush you use, uh, whatever you feel like. Um, so you can go ahead and take you know, like an oil brush or whatever your favorite brush is. Uh, and then what you do is you just make sure that this is going to be on black and then all of a sudden you start painting in and this is going to be that adjusted shadow layer right so we can go ahead and say go paint this in here and if you notice the color is different the color is adjusted for whatever the the base color is now this is pretty severe right this is really really dark um, and it's probably not the exact color that you'd want to go ahead and use for this uh, because it's a little bit severe but we get the basic kind of shadow stuff with this. You can go put all that in. Uh, boom, boom, boom. You get your shadows. And then typically what I'll do is I'll go knock that back a lot. So I'll go ahead and just change the opacity of that layer. And then I'll go ahead and take a softer brush. So I'll go do something like uh, move over to, instead of using one of these sort of bigger brushes, I'll go ahead and use something like uh, an airbrush. Right. So I can go ahead and put that in. So I'm not going to go worry about anything with you know, flatting and things like that, because all of that stuff was sort of done in that video. But you get the idea how you can go knock in some shadows really, really, really quickly. And the idea is you don't need to be thinking about the color, um, because really you've already got the localized kind of uh, uh, adjusted color that's all going to be coherent and it's all going to be balanced with each other. You can do the same thing for the highlights layer. So you go ahead and create a new layer, uh, and then this layer is going to be uh, a new correction layer. Again, you do hue, saturation, luminosity. And we're just going to go do the inverse. So we're going to go ahead and bump this up to a much brighter color. Uh, typically, you'll have this balance where highlights are going to be uh, cool and the, the shadows are going to be warm or the reverse. Um, so I'm going to go change this to it's, so it gets more bluer. So that looks more bluer to me. Uh, I'm going to decrease the saturation a little bit. And that's going to be my highlights. So again, this whole thing is now completely painted in by default. Uh, I can go ahead and do select all, hit delete, and that blows it away. Uh, we get rid of my selection, and now I can go ahead and use one of these brushes again. Let me go pick my flat oil brush. Um, I'm going to go ahead and come in here. 
knock this back a little bit. And you can go ahead and see that I can now go ahead and paint in my highlights. And again, completely different colors, but it makes sense locally to whatever that was. So, you know, you can go ahead and see this as, as sort of a good way to kind of do this. Um, again, way too dramatic initially. You go knock that back a little bit, um, and the idea is that you're, we're, we're starting off in a, a place that you can kind of play around with. Uh, you go over to something along the lines of an airbrush, um, and then all of a sudden we can make this a little bit more uh, reasonable. Right. Now, did this do all of your you know, coloring and stuff for you? No. You probably want to come back in here and, and touch it up a bit and, and you know, create another layer that's just a normal layer on top of it where you just you know, paint. Uh, but the idea is that this can get you the broad strokes outline of your... Um, you know, your coloring and do it really, really, really quickly. So for some things, like if this was like background elements and something, I know Leonard Art basically f focuses mainly on comic stuff. So if these were background elements, you're probably not spending a huge amount of time rendering them uh, in, you know, a painterly fashion or anything like that. This might be fine. This could be completely enough. And then you could also go ahead and do this for different light sources. So in you know, the example where you had, this is sort of your ambient light, um, and then you had a different light, you know, sort of over here coming from the, the right hand side. We could go create a another highlight layer, and then you could go ahead and actually that's not a highlight layer, that's just a regular layer. Uh, go up to the layers, go new correction layer, uh, hue, saturation, and luminosity, and let's say this is more yellow, right? So we could go ahead and do that. Let's say we get very saturated, and we can go bump the brightness, right? So again, do the same thing. Delete. And then you can go ahead and come in here uh, and then pick a, a brush. Maybe this one's going to be, we'll just use a pencil for this. Maybe this is like an edge, uh, an edge shot, edge light. So we can go ahead and come in here and uh, we'll go paint in a little bit of, of rim lighting uh, along this. Right? And the idea is, again, this is going to be correct in terms of the color that's being used for all of these objects. I might do a little highlight with that. But. So anyway, hope that's useful. Uh, thought I would go ahead and sort of reply to that, um, just because you know it's. I think this is a pretty common way to go do things. I see this a lot uh, with friends of mine that are, that work in sort of composite art things, because one of the big things about this is that if you decide you want to go change the overall value or something like that, you can go ahead and adjust the hue and saturation of one of these layers, and it does everything universally. Um, you can you know so that's that's a bonus. Other ways of going doing this, by the way, are just to go drop in a layer that's filled with a color. Um, so you can go ahead and just create, you know, if you wanted to go do another simple version of this, let's get rid of like our shadows, for example. We could have created a new layer over here and, you know, just go pick a color. Uh, let's say, you know, we want this to be warmer. Um, so we go up here to the warm spectrum um, and we go ahead and say, we're gonna just go grab this sort of reddish uh, kind of color. Uh, and then we just go ahead and fill the entire thing. So we just do Control A, uh, hit our convenient little paint bucket, and uh, we can go drop this down here. Right. Obviously, that doesn't make any sense for this. But we can go ahead and change this to multiply, right? Um, and you know, you can then go ahead and create a creator mask for this. If you go ahead and see here, we have the create layer mask. Um, and actually, let me go to make sure I'm selected on there. Go and select all and then do delete. And now we've got our, our layer mask there. Uh, you're probably gonna go want to drop the opacity down. But at this point, we can do the same exact thing that we did before, right? So we can go ahead and use our brush, change this back to black, uh, and then we can go ahead and pick uh, a paintbrush utility, well, not utility, paintbrush, um, and then just go ahead and pop in the kind of local adjusted version of that. And you get the idea. So I think that's a really nice way. I think um, masks are super, super, super powerful. I think a lot of times we think of this as more of something that exists in, in Photoshop. Uh, but again, you could do this exact same process in Photoshop. Um, the, the differences would be, would be pretty negligible. Uh, but this is a fairly quick and easy uh, coloring method that I think uh, that could be potentially helpful. So I will shut up. Hopefully this will render and then uh, I'll be able to go post this to YouTube and share this out with you guys.